HET 194, Nate Preparation, Week 3 and 4, HVAC Refrigeration Safety. The objective of this week's assignment will help the HVAC refrigeration learner to understand the importance of safety on the job, also to understand cause and effect of electrical safety, discover how electrical current can cause harm to the human body, use electrical tools and meters to check for electrical current, discuss the need for grounding electrical equipment, and discuss the purpose of ground fault interrupters. In this introduction, the HVAC technician and students need to have a working knowledge of electricity and of how electricity can be a great benefit to humans. However, knowing the potential dangers is also extremely important because of its health and safety issues. HVAC technicians work with electricity and other hazardous equipment on a daily basis, and injuries can be a common problem if the technician does not follow basic procedures while working with all types of job responsibilities. Alternating current is the power of choice in the United States, and because of its uh, destructive forces, if used incorrectly, the training of the HVAC technician is imperative. Because HVAC technicians work with high and low pressures and temperatures and areas, these areas should be of concern. Therefore, this week's discussion will cover the use of safety working habits and procedures of competent HVAC technician and how they should be aware of potential issues at all times. This week's vocabulary will cover National Safety Code, Circuit Breakers, Conductor, Electrical Shock, Electric Motor Force, Fuse, Ground, GFICI, Live Circuit, Open Circuit, PSI, and Heat Energy. Temperature hazards can be things that we come in daily because HAC technicians work with temperatures, pressures, and basically controlling those things to cause a environment that is comfortable for human beings. So a HVAC technician will work with extreme temperatures which can cause harm if not handled correctly. Refrigerants can be well below the freezing point and cause uh, frostbites if it makes contact to a person's skin. Heating equipment have flames or high pressure steam which can cause burns or property damage. Therefore, it is important to be aware of these dangers at all times while working. Low temperatures, we know that in Illinois, we are known for having very cold winters. Heavy snows and extreme cold can immobilize entire region. And since we know that this is a thing that is common in the Midwest, and because HVAC technicians um, have to drive from place to place, but also uh, work in the environment. Most commercial heating and air conditioning and refrigeration technicians time to time have to work outdoors on equipment that may be uh, on roofs of commercial buildings or possible could be um, places where it could be remote. So therefore, um, dressing correctly is a very important uh, aspect of working in the, in the field. So we have to um, be able to protect ourselves by wearing uh, the proper clothing to, um, to protect our bodies from the low temperatures. These are some of the uh, things that we need to be concerned with when we're dealing with low temperatures because uh, a technician may not only work in uh, outdoors time to time and be in the environment, but also refrigeration technicians work uh, in walk-in coolers and walk-in freezers, which can be at very low temperatures. Walk-in freezers, especially if it's a blast freezer, could be well below a minus 20 degrees. And it may have to work hours at a time in those conditions. So being prepared at all times by having winter clothes even in the summertime in their truck um, based on 
the type of job they may be doing. So look at this list and it goes over some of the things that we need to consider, such as wearing mittens instead of gloves, because mittens will be able to retain the heat in your hands compared to gloves, which is separating your fingers. Wearing water repellent clothing, uh, wearing a hat. Your hat uh, would protect your head from losing heat very rapidly. And other things that is important to understand the type of clothing and making sure that we do not overexert ourselves when we are working in environments. Also, high temperatures can be an issue in Illinois. We know that we have very high temperatures outdoors with high humidity, which will cause your body to retain heat and can have heat exhaustion. So dressing correctly in the summertime is also important. Wearing clothes that can breathe, uh, maybe a single layer of clothes that, and cotton clothes that can uh, breathe the air in and pull the moisture from your body. Here are some of the things to consider when we work in outdoors in the summertime. It's a list of things, these bullet points, uh, that'll help you to rely on working outdoors at long hours without having much problems. Just something simple as wearing light color clothes can reflect the heat away from your body, um, the sun from uh, absorbing the heat to cause your body temperature to increase. Pressure is also another area where we are concerned. And by codes, building codes and um, mechanical codes, all pressure vessels have to have some type of pressure relief uh, part of the, the vessel. So just in case if the pressure was higher than normal uh, or unsafe, that it will be able to relieve the pressure from the tank and allow it to um, bring the pressure down to keep it in a safe level. So, in the HVAC field, working with high pressure systems and vessels is common practice and the technician must become skilled in all safety issues concerning these hazards, such as chaining down um, pressurized tanks, like oxygen tanks or nitrogen tanks uh, or acetylene tanks, where it can fall over and break the valve off and release the pressure into the atmosphere. Uh, these pressures can be very high compared to like nitrogen or oxygen, those tanks are usually over 2,000 pounds per square inch of pressure, which is extremely high pressure if it will um, break the valve off and it can be like a, a missile. So understanding those safety issues is very important. So because the pressurized systems can increase its pressure by increasing the temperature around the tank or system, and which is very important because if the temperature increase around a pressure vessel, the pressure inside of it will increase also along with it. So protection of the occupants and the structure is obtained through pressure safety devices and safety procedures, such as chaining the uh, equipment and leaving caps on the valves to protect the valve from becoming damaged if it did fall. Things that we find that is under pressure that we are concerned with, such as nitrogen tanks, CO2 tanks, oxygen tanks, refrigerant cylinders, gas fuels, welding equipment, steam systems, and of course, refrigeration systems. All these uh, will be under high pressures. And when it comes to like steam systems, of course, is high could be high pressures, but also high temperature. So refrigeration system have refrigerants inside of the piping, which is under pressure. And the concern of the pressure hazard is not only because of the pressure, but also because of the temperature and the chemical reaction. The refrigerant, when released into the atmosphere, will flash into a gas, and the temperatures will drop to about a minus 20 to a minus 40 degrees, based on the type of refrigerant is used. So this can not only be a, a pressure I issue, but also uh, low temperature um, issues. So these hazards need to be uh, thought of while working along with these types of uh, refrigerants. Boiler systems have water and steam that is under pressure, but also under high temperature. 
However, the steam boiler has a larger problem with pressure safety issues because it will store more energy in the steam. Also because steam can be compressed compared to water. Steam will expand when it is released into the atmosphere. So compared to water, water will not expand but basically will uh, fall to the ground while steam will pressurize the room that is, it is in. The pressure of steam when it's released in the atmosphere will add pressure against the walls, floors, ceilings, and doors. This additional pressure can damage these buildings' components by adding more stress than it can handle from the expansion of the steam. Chemical hazards is another thing we deal with when we are HVAC technicians because we deal with multiple and many different types of chemicals. We deal with chemicals that will uh, cleaning condensers or cooling towers or we use chemicals for maintaining uh, the consistent uh, pH of water in boilers or cooling towers and these chemicals we use can be very acidic or corrosive or toxic and because of this we need to wear uh, our personal protection uh, equipment such as uh, safety glasses, face shields, uh, gloves and other type of uh, long sleeve clothing to protect our skin, eyes, and face from these chemicals. So having a ventilated and ventilation in rooms and if you're working in these uh, closed environments is maybe the first thing we need to consider is reducing the concentration of films that can cause harm. And so in other words having a ventilation in a room by bringing fresh air in is one of the first things we must consider before we uh, open up uh, chemical containers. So wearing the right type of gloves and breathing apparatuses is necessary for personal safety. So some of the things we work with again, the chemicals we deal with on a regular basis in the, in the HVAC field is like condenser coil cleaners, evaporator coil cleaners, uh, cooling tower chemicals, boiler chemicals, refrigerant oils, and of course refrigerants. Fire hazard can be a potential issue in HVAC field because we work with heating systems. Uh, it could be uh, natural gas, coal, or uh, oil. And because of this, we need to be concerned multiple ways because it can damage the structure, the building we're working in, or it could be um, hazardous to ourselves or to the occupants of the building. So a fire can be dangerous to people, equipment, and the building. The technician need to be trained in how to use safety controls and to control the fire as well as putting out the fire uh, when it's out of control. Technicians use flames for soldering, brazing, and welding. Furthermore, a potential fire can occur if best practices are not adhered to. So learning about different types of fires such as paper, wood fires, chemical fires, and electrical fires is important because each of these require different technique to extinguish the flames. So we look at uh, the potential of fires and how it can occur and the issues we can run into that we have to understand that there is different type of fire extinguishers and they rate it by different types of fires like an A, B, or C type of uh, extinguisher. As some matter of fact, many of these fire extinguishers are multiple task type uh, extinguishers and usually the best to carry because it would cover a wide range of types of fires. So there's chemical fires and paper and wood. You could use water to put that out, but a lot of chemical fires, you do not want to use uh, water on it because it may have a chemical reaction. The same thing with oil fires. Oil fires will, uh, with water, will actually cause the oil to um, explode basically from the expansion of the water hitting the oil. So using a proper extinguisher is uh, very important. That leads up to personal protection equipment, we call PPEs. And this is basically protecting yourself from uh, harm. And there's many different type of uh, safety equipment we can uh, use, such as safety glasses, ear uh, protection, such as earplugs or earmuffs. 
from loud noises. Of course, there's gloves, many different types of gloves based on the type of work you're doing. Electrical work will use uh, insulated gloves and leather gloves to, uh, to protect yourself from high voltage and of course the rubber will use as insulator but when we're dealing with sharp objects we will use type of gloves that keep you from uh, cutting yourself or penetrating your skin okay, and there's other many other types like you say face shields if you're dealing with chemicals safety classes is great but you also have to use a face shield just in case if it's splatter on your skin because very possible the chemicals itself can burn or be corrosive to your skin or the areas where you're working. So wearing the proper clothing, like long sleeve clothes, uh, make sure you're not wearing uh, like uh, jewelry, like watches or necklaces or things like that that can get caught in equipment can be part of the safety issue that you deal with. So these are a list of PPEs, personal protection equipment like safety glasses, safety gloves, work gloves, ear protection, respirators, of course clothing, the proper clothing, hard hats, knee pads, and face shield. All these are necessary things that you need to keep on your service truck based on the type of job you will be doing. Even knee pads, uh, you may not think that you need it, but in the long run, the knee pads will protect your knees from bending down at, for long hours and it will um, give more life to your career because if your knees go out uh, you cannot go up ladders and, and go into other areas but wearing these will definitely will help with your uh, livelihood. Ladders is another area where we need to be concerned with for safety and using the proper type ladder is more important. Ladders are rated by the class or classes and is rated to based on the weight and the amount of uh, weight it can uh, handle, including the, uh, the occupant who's using the, uh, the ladder. So using the, the, the highest rating ladder is very important for technicians because we use it on a daily basis. So the point is never use a ladder that was designed for a homeowner. Those are low rated type of ladders. And we need to use, like I say, commercial rated ladders because of course we are uh, putting commercial use on this. So using a proper type of ladders. So working with electricity, we do not use metal ladders because it can conduct electricity. And using fiberglass or wooden ladders would be the primary or a choice for uh, technicians in the field. Usually the fiberglass ladder is, is very durable, but is heavier than a wooden ladder. And so, but anyway, for your, your safety and longer use, fiberglass will probably be the way to go. So uh, we use the right ladder for the right job. If you just need to reach up high to something, you can use step ladders. Of course, if you need to go uh, on a roof, we use extension ladders, and extension ladders have to be placed correctly on the ground level to keep from having uh, uh, fall hazards while climbing up the ladder. Matter of fact, extension ladders, once you attach it to um, the building to, to get to the roof or high areas, you need to be strapped down to something to secure it so it doesn't fall with you on it. And the worst thing to get on a roof and the wind picks up and blow the ladder off because it wasn't secured. But also, uh, not having the ladder uh, leveled to, on the ground can be an issue, which can cause the ladder to fall once you get close to the top. So keeping it balanced and level is, is very important. So these are different types of ladders you see here, such as extension ladders, which is used to get on high places. Step ladders are used for um, getting to levels not very high, but by OSHA codes in uh, building codes is that anytime you're over six feet in height, you also need to use, which is personal protection equipment, a harness and a, a lanyard. Uh, this is to help you if you did fall, to keep you from hitting the ground by supporting you 
uh, or suspending you and to keep you from, um, let's say, uh, falling and causing harm to yourself. But also, that's what the fall protection is designed for. And also there are scaffolds, and scaffolds are, if you're working in a, large, in a great area up in the air and you need to move around, that's what scaffolds are used for, or, uh, uh, or mobile platforms which can move around. And even those have to be even level too. So to summarize this week's uh, um, PowerPoint presentation, all HVAC technicians need to have a copy of the National Electrical Code and have a working knowledge of its information. It takes a combination of voltage and current flow through the body to be fatal. In other words, is that it's not only the amperage, or it's not just the voltage, but it's a combination of both of those at high enough levels that can be harmful if it travels through your heart. When working with electricity, disconnect the power from uh, the circuit for your safety. If checking a circuit for power, keep only one hand inside of the electrical panel to keep the likelihood of becoming part of the circuit. Always read the MSDS, which is the uh, Material Safety Data Sheet, to learn about any hazards that can be present. Only use ladders that are rated for the type of job and the weight of the user. Reference page.